What's going on everybody, C4, welcome back to the channel, and today we're reacting to the massive trade that just happened between the New Orleans Saints and the Philadelphia Eagles. I would have had this out earlier, but I was just watching one of my favorite things in the world that doesn't include the Philadelphia Eagles, which is Arsenal Football Club. Get absolutely embarrassed, that was fun. Uh, so now I had that time to stew over and, and truly get my take. I mean, there's not really a whole lot to react here. Philly has traded picks 16 and 19 in the first round this year, as well as a sixth rounder. To the New Orleans Saints for pick 18 this year, a third rounder this year, a seventh rounder this year, a first rounder next year, and then in two years, a second round pick. Everyone knew all along it was the worst kept secret in the NFL that Philly was going to trade out of these picks. There was no way Philly was going to keep three first rounders, and they did business. They basically, you know, the fact that we got pick 18 back was, I think, better than expected, but that's, that's the going rate. Right? But essentially, we just got rid of a pick. We kicked the pick down the road, and basically the Saints, the cost of doing business, a third and a second. Um, I'll take that. I'll take that every day of the week. Uh, quickly, just what it means for the Saints, because obviously we want to talk about the Eagles here. You assume it's for a quarterback, right? You assume that they want this ammunition to maybe move up. Maybe if there's some momentum that gets behind Malik Willis, or if they really like Kenny Pickett. Like, you know, even even if you don't think that they're going to trade both these two picks to trade up again to try to get a quarterback, maybe they'll take a QB that falls to them, and then with the other first, they get a tackle. They, they Maybe a tackle slips, or they get a wide receiver, which is probably more likely given the talent this year, and they can get, you know, a Chris Olave, a Traylon Burks, Drake London, Jahan Dotson, any of those guys, right? So I think the Saints have a lot of holes, and I would say ultimately – the Saints are not the best team when it comes to drafting. They're not terrible. I, I just feel like, in terms of valuing their picks, they're not the they're not the most conservative. They gave two first round picks to get Marcus Davenport. You know, who's a project edge rusher. Who's you know a solid guy for them now. But you know, I, I never thought that the Saints properly valued their future draft capital, and we saw that here again, but that's good. It worked out well for my Philadelphia Eagles. Looking at it from the Eagles' standpoint, I mean, if you're a Saints fan and you're watching this, I'd, I'd love to hear what you guys think you do with those picks. I don't think it's crazy to think that maybe they rock and roll with Winston and they use 16 and 19 to fix the holes on their team, be it at offensive tackle, wide receiver. You could say that they need, you know... A line, you know, I don't want to say linebacker, but they could look somewhere in the secondary. But I, I would more so tackle. You could you could get a tackle at 16 and a wide receiver at 19. But for the Philadelphia Eagles, we got pick 18. Ultimately, the same players that were being mocked and in, in generally in the area code for Philadelphia at 15, 16, and 19. Pick 18, you're still very much in play. Um, you know, I will. I don't know. I've been consistent with this. I am not a huge fan of how, you know, just doing mock drafts like that, how the board falls to Philadelphia. There are a lot of rumblings. There are rumblings, like, from people that have connections in the league. I'm not saying it's true because I have these players. I would love them to be Eagles because I don't think they're going to be anywhere near our range. But there's people that think Garrett Wilson's going to fall. There's people that think Kayvon Thibodeau's going to fall. There's people that think Kyle Hamilton's going to fall. There's people that think Derek Stingley's going to fall. If Philly, if you told me Philly still with pick 15 and 18 can get, Two of those guys, it's very unlikely. I'm not saying that this guy, but I'm not speaking this into existence. I'm just saying if you're looking at some of these players, a lot of the players that most Philadelphia Eagle fans would say are dream picks have some sort of rumblings attached to their name right now during this draft process from at least, like, be it Bleacher Report, be it uh, you know, any, any of these other scouts that are verified with check marks on Twitter, guys that are going to fall. Like, right now, it's Thibodeau and Stingley and Hamilton. Those are three guys that you cannot, like, search their name and not see... An opposing argument to them maybe falling in the draft or or a prediction that they could fall in the draft. Those would be home run picks for Philadelphia. If we can find a way to get that and get this ammunition next year to trade up and get a quarterback, Howie Roseman's a he, you know he's a wizard. There's a, as much as I think he absolutely is terrible at evaluating draft talent. The other side of the game is where he's so strong. That if if if, if he could properly evaluate talent and, and going off of last year's draft which looks fairly decent for the Philadelphia Eagles. If he could put it all together, he's the best like in terms of you know, getting the val getting value for his players, getting value for his assets and generally contracts. He's as, he's as good as it gets in the NFL. It's always been, you know, the drafting and you know, we always go JJ over uh, DK and Jalen Rager over Justin Jefferson and stuff like that, but I mean, how he just got that new contract extension and he Given last year, last year was ballsy, man. Last year, to, to go from basically whatever the difference is between how you view Jalen Waddle and Devontae Smith and picking up another first-round pick, has it's it's been brilliant. It's been nothing short of brilliant. And while 
I was a little disappointed with his lack of aggressiveness and free agency this year. We still got Hassan Riddick. We still got Kaiser White. And there's reports, you know, again, there's reports linking a lot of teams to these players. But Philly is right in the mix when people are talking about Honey Badger, when people are talking about Stephon Gilmore. So, like, if we can add one of those two guys and, you know, follow this up with, with guys maybe following us in the draft, like, there's a chance that this is an incredible offseason for the Philadelphia Eagles. And, the you know, the... The, the overall, as we see all these picks stand for Philadelphia, is like, what does it mean for quarterback? Clearly, they're making this move for quarterback. And I don't revel in the the fact that it does seem like the higher-ups in Philadelphia agree with me. Because it's it's a incredibly divisive topic right now in the Eagles fan base. It really feels like it's split. There's 50% of the people that think Jalen Hurts is the franchise quarterback. He's a future god. And they, they bring up, like, oh, last year was pretty much his rookie year. And then you have... You know, I'd probably say it's like 70-30, like 70% of the fans, and that includes a lot of the casual fans, are getting behind Jalen Hurts and think he's going to turn it around and develop into this monster. And then about 30%, which unfortunately I'm in, think that, you know, he's a great guy, but I don't know if he's the quarterback that takes it to the next level. That, more so, my opinion has always been, I think Jalen Hurts, even since he came out of Oklahoma, obviously he went from Alabama to Oklahoma, but the Oklahoma was like his last final college prospect going in the draft, the limitations that he's had at Oklahoma are the same limitations he's had in the NFL. You haven't really seen a whole lot of development there from Jalen Hurts. And for me, that doesn't mean he's a bad player. We, we went to the playoffs with Jalen Hurts. Especially for a team that, for Philadelphia, is committed to running the football. Jalen Hurts is a guy you can win with. But there comes a certain point in time when you watch that game against the Bucs and you get that on-field audio of the Bucs sideline saying, just make him play quarterback, he can't read a defense. You have issues, man. You're only going to go as far as your quarterback in this league. So, my take on Hertz has always been, I'm not going to rehash like another five-minute breakdown. It's just, I just think he's really close to the ceiling. And if he's as close to his ceiling and it is what it is, it's not good enough. Philly is going to have to go back to the well. So, with two first-round picks next year, you know, you, you open things up there a little bit. So, on quarterbacks next year, how are you, you going to talk about all that? And then, well, if not Hertz, who? Well, uh, I got really... It's all over the place for the quarterback class next year. There's Every year there's a guy that, I'm not going to say Kenny Pickett, because I always thought Kenny Pickett was really good, but I didn't think Kenny Pickett going into last year's college football season was a lock for the first round. But there's always those guys that kind of are just like, well, they're good players, and then they solidify themselves as first rounders. So we got DJU from Clemson. In terms of skill and tools, he's first rounder, but he was horrific. Clemson was pitiful last season. So there's a question mark. He could be in the name. You got Van Dyke, another guy that I think could kind of come out of nowhere. He looked pretty promising in limited action for the U. You have Sam Hartman from Wake Forest. I mean, that size, 6'1", barely. Like, he's one of those guys that, if you ever told me he's like 5'11", you believe it. But he looked impressive in games. Like, anytime him and Sam Howell went head-to-head, it was awesome. Uh, you got Tanner McKee from Stanford, another guy that could be in that first-round conversation. His Gator fan, Anthony Richardson, is absolutely electrifying. He's a 240-pound Lamar Jackson he, if he can stay healthy, and there's a knock with it, he could absolutely be right in that conversation for the top quarterback next year. You got K.J. Jefferson from Arkansas, Will Levis from Kentucky, formerly of Penn State, just electrifying arm talent. Jackson Dart transferring to Ole Miss. I mean, there could be some magic there. Hendon Hooker uh, was kind of just a guy at Virginia Tech, and he showed some flashes at Tennessee. You got Grayson McCall from Coastal Carolina, Jerkovich from Boston College. Like, that's a group of quarterbacks that, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if at any point those guys get, you know, put into the first round discussion as a first round quarterback next year, which could put them on the Eagles' radar. But you would think with two first round picks, acquiring that ammunition, it's for Philly to trade up. Because with Jalen Hurts under center, Philly's not going to be, I could say almost with full confidence, Philly is not going to be a bottom five team. Philly's not going to earn a top five pick next year. Saints. The Saints are kind of like the Eagles. Like their, their quarterback is question mark. I would almost argue that the, the Eagles next year are probably going to be a little bit better than the Saints. But the Saints still have Michael Thomas coming back from injury. You got Alvin Kamara. I don't think that arrest has really uh, you know evolved anything. Their O line saw. They still got a lot of guys, a lot of veterans, a lot of win now type guys on defense. The Saints are going to be bad, but like Philly's probably it's safe to say going to be kind of in the same round. We're like Philly right now. We had 15, 16, and 19, right? It might be a little bit better than that, but I I don't think between the Eagles and Saints we're going to have two top ten picks. So we're going to have to trade those, probably future assets as well, to move up and get one of the top two quarterbacks. It's either going to be C.J. Stroud or it's going to be Bryce Young. And if you told me C4, 
you know, who you trade for, it's Bryce Young. Bryce Young is incredible. He literally, like, it's one of those things where the knock will always, you already tell, the knock against him is going to be he's played with Alabama, right? It's a knock against all Alabama quarterbacks. But when you just watch him play, he's not a guy that wins with 99 throw power. He's not a guy that wins with 99 speed. Like, he is such an intelligent quarterback. He has the X's and O's things where it's like, He's gonna be amazing. I I I, I truly think, and you you can even go into friggin' Arch Manning. If you're talking about anyone, any quarterback right now associated with the world of college football, he's like the only guy that comes close to Trevor Lawrence level of like this is your guy. This is the franchise quarterback that everyone wants. He's, uh, you know, maybe slight, six feet tall, 190. But the issue, yada yada yada, comes down to it. these are the top two quarterbacks I think Philly would be in for. Stroud has had. More downs, I would say, than Bryce Young. Bryce Young has just kind of been like a steady, elite performer. C.J. Stroud's had some up and downs. And I mean, as it stands right now, I wouldn't hate C.J. Stroud. But the point being, not to end this on a negative note, because you want to just, especially as an Eagle fan, there's probably a lot of Eagle fans watching this, you love to take this in as like, oh, yeah, man, we're going to talk QB. But like, you know, Bryce Young's going to be first overall. Like, unless there's something crazy where, you know, you know, I don't want to speak, this, but like if, if Jacksonville, right, their roster on the call, you know, they spend a lot of money. Like if if any any team that loses their quarterback and then just struggles and, and they end up with the first pick, they're probably not going to draft Bryce Young. And they're going to look for Will Anderson, the freak alien edge rusher from Alabama. But the log- logically, you're going to think, and I made a tweet about this, it's like what team do you think is going to have the Bryce Young pick next year, right? Like if you think about it, it's like, all right, Detroit, Atlanta, Seattle maybe. Like you're looking at some of the bottom tier rebuilding rosters. Those guys aren't going to want to trade in Philly. Those guys are going to want the top quarterbacks themselves. So I just, I don't want to say a word of caution because you still, you know, who knows how the, how the, everything's going to play out for records and who's going to own what picks next year. But it takes two to tango. And I, I think we need to remember that. There's going to be more teams than just Philadelphia that want these players. There's going to be teams that are going to be way worse than the Eagles this year that are going to earn the Bryce Young picks. And, like, you know, if you need Bryce Young, you're not going to be trading for even three first-round picks. You don't care. You need their quarterback, and you're going to get the quarterback that everyone wants. You're, you're not going to trade for future picks. So, I don't know. I, I would say that's my word of caution from this deal. Don't just assume because Philly has two first-round picks next year, we're going to get a Bryce Young, or we're even going to get... Like, literally, what... I'm not gonna, This is not a worst-case scenario. You might want to familiarize yourself with all these guys. I, I would say prepare for that. Because just you know, let's just say right now, you're looking at rebuild teams. We'll say Seattle holds number one, Atlanta holds pick number two. These guys are gone. Those teams aren't going to be wheeling and dealing. Those these guys are gone. So it's I'll just say a word of caution is just don't assume that because we got two first, we're getting Bryce Young or we're getting C.J. Stroud. A lot of those teams that are going to be in the conversation for these players might get the actual picks required to get these two players, and then Philly's left with two first-round picks again next year with like, oh, well, what do we do? So I, I don't know, I want to be doom and gloom. I don't want to just be negative right out the gate, but I think it's going to be advisable to be prepared for worst-case scenario and that we're, you know, we're going to have two first-round picks and might still be on the outside looking in for some of these top quarters. And I'd love to hear what you guys think about this trade for the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, obviously, you know, not, not a lot changed. not like you need to do like a re brand new Eagles mock draft. We're still actually in the exact same bubble of draft of, of players, available players and mock drafts and stuff by moving 16 and 19 to get pick 18. But, uh, love to hear you guys think about it in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. As always, first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button if you enjoyed. Until next time, it's C4, saying peace, out.